I want to tell you a little bit about my plants love story um, now that you guys are at a new chapter in your own um, I didn't always love plants in fact I was way more into people and animals earlier in my life um, I was going to be a doctor for a while and then I was going to be a vet and then I was going to be a biology researcher um, but my senior year in college for my birthday one of my friends and my roommate, she gave me this book called Epitaph for a Peach by David Moss Masumoto. And it was the story uh, of this farmer, a uh, true story, uh, an autobiography of a year on his farm and his efforts to save an heirloom orchard of peaches uh, that had been in his family for many decades. Um, and he does this by trying a new farming strategy. He went organic, which was new newish in the 90s um, and this book was lyrical beautiful sensual all these things um, but most importantly this book reminded me of this dream that I had had since I was a child which is that I had grandparents who had a farm and that I could go spend summers on the farm and so here I was a senior in college you know standing on the cliff of my youth and looking out at you know this unknown sea of adulthood and realizing I had had this dream all these years that I had never realized and that the time was kind of now um, if if I wanted to experience that and so <laughs> unlike most of my classmates I made plans to go work on a farm after I graduated from college and the farm I went to was an organic strawberry farm uh, in northern Vermont about six miles south of the Canadian border um, and it was the most beautiful place I had ever been. Hands down. I mean, I was coming from Houston, so that's not really saying a lot. But I mean, it really is an amazingly beautiful place. And, you know, what it was like to wake up and go work outside um, and to smell the smell of the rain coming in, being about 20 minutes away. The taste of a fresh raspberry that I had never had before. Um, smelling lily of the valley. I had never smelled lily of the valley before. I, I just ate it up. Um, so I was there five months and then the season ended and, and I left and I extended my stay in Vermont and lived there a little bit longer but not long after that I did the responsible thing with my degree and I moved to North Carolina to work in biotech. Well, it didn't take very long for me to get really tired of my cube farm and really sentimental looking out the window at the weather changing every day. Um, and I realized I could not do my career in biotech for the rest of my life. So I went back to school at NC State. I got a master's in horticultural science uh, with a focus in sustainable agriculture. I thought I was going to be maybe like an extension agent or a researcher. Um, and I love that too. I took vegetable classes, vegetable production classes, and um, oh gosh, what else? Soil fertility, um, agroecology. But partway through that program, I also realized I was gonna need a little bit more creativity. And that's when I found landscape architecture. Uh, and so once I knew that I was gonna be going into LA after my Hort degree, I started tailoring my classes so that they would be classes that a landscape architect could really use, like dendrology, the study of trees, um, an advanced ecology class, um, an advanced soils class. And, and I just loved it, I ate it all up. Going to landscape architecture, that was you know just another cherry on this Sunday. Um, you know, getting to learn about how you can aesthetically work with plants or you know, create certain kinds of sensual experiences with plants. It was just amazing. Um, so anyways, uh, then I, uh, I graduated in 2008, which there was kind of a little recession that happened then, so it was kind of tough. Uh, and I ended up having to work in landscaping for a while. I should say getting to work in landscaping because really it was a new part of my education that was extremely valuable. Um, but eventually, you know, working in residential design build, um, which is a very hands-on very sensory rich um, corner of the profession and just got to learn even more plants. So after that I also had to move to Houston 
So I learned my plants in North Carolina. Um, then I moved to Houston, totally different zone, um, and had to learn a whole bunch of subtropical and tropical plants, which was challenging and fun. Uh, but also getting to do things like design with citrus and avocado and Arabian jasmine, you know, plants that were totally luscious and exciting and delicious. Um, so I love that. Uh, and then I moved here uh, to start teaching landscape architecture and, you know, joy of all joys. I get to teach two classes in the plant sequence, you know, be still my heart. And besides that, zone five here in Manhattan is a different zone than I've lived in. So I get to learn all of the new plants here, as well as the prairie plants, and see some of my old favorites like hostas and lilacs from Vermont and peonies and lily of the valley, my favorite, lily of the valley again. So I, I'm just eating this up uh, and so excited about this new chapter in my plants love story. Oh, and there's an epilogue. Um, so last summer, I actually got to go back to Vermont. Uh, and this time I took my 10 year old daughter. She's 11 now, but she was 10 then. And we went to the farm that I used to work on and visited with my old farm family and walked the fields, saw their operation. And this time she was the one picking the strawberries. She got to pick a flat of strawberries uh, that we took to her grandma. And it just, you know, made me so happy to be able to take her to this place that really was like the biggest turning point in my life. Not only in the experiences that I had there of working with plants and working with the land, um, but I think most importantly was honoring something inarguably true about myself. You know, that I had wanted to spend a summer on a farm my whole life, and I did that for myself, and, um, and it changed my life. And uh, I, if I could go back, I would, you know, clap myself on the back and say, thank you, thank you. Because uh, this has been a wonderful new, new 20 years of my life. Anyways, that's my plants love story. And, you know, now you are starting your own love stories or a new chapter in your love stories with plants. And I can't wait to hear more about it.